Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Work Outdoors. My name is Connor. Today we're giving you guys bonus stuff. Fishing motivation. This is not really part of the Fishing 2021 series where we do cover bass, stripers, and electronics. But if you guys are interested in that, where we discuss on a month-to-month -month basis what kind of technologies you need, what kind of lures, baits, where to find fish. Every month we'll do a striper, electronics, and bass video. So click on that if you guys want to watch that. But this is bonus materials, okay? So this is fishing motivation. We get this question quite a bit. And this video is kind of geared towards the guys that want to go to that next step. But they're like, wait, wait, pump the brakes. I'm not going to buy new products. I'm not going to buy new rods, reels, lines, things like that. I need to fix the noggin. And this video is going to be partly titled, I need helps yep spelled like that too I need helps so we're gonna give you the top five motivational quotes that helped us go from skunking out all the time to being a threat at a lot of tournaments okay guys So, before we uh, get started with the number five, really appreciate it if you guys subscribe to the channel. And maybe if this is the fourth or fifth time you've watched this video, I know this video is free and all, but if it's the fourth or fifth time, or if you've improved your game, I'd really appreciate if you guys picked up one of our mugs, just to kind of show your appreciation. You know, that way we can continue doing these type of videos for everybody. Because I know this is uh, showing out a lot of secrets. So, anyways, grab a, grab a coffee cup. And enjoy okay guys before I start my top five I just want to say if you're going into any sport it doesn't matter if it's fishing or volleyball or football or you know badminton or something before when you go into a sport there's always some dominant figures in there and they have fine-tuned their craft right to the point where they have risen to the top so when I came to the world of fishing I didn't know anybody that I'm about to list on the back of the whiteboard right now. So I wanted to study, in a sense, who the best anglers were and what they were doing. So when you start subscribing to their social medias, a lot of it is just advertising, sponsorship stuff. But once in a while, they'll give you nuggets, you know, gold nuggets that you can take to the bank, you know, type stuff. And... This is my personal collection of those little gold nuggets that I was able to, you know, pick and keep in the last, say, five years or so that really helped uh, really helped us improve our game. Whether you're going from dead last to just half pack or you're already at half pack and you want to go to the top ten, I feel like these will, these will help you out quite substantially. All right, so number five. Number five comes to you from Kevin Van Dam. When I was starting to fish, I, I wanted to do everything. I wanted to control everything. But he says, only worry about the things you can't control. So if you can only worry about the things you can control, well, that definitely limited is the weather. You can't control the weather. You can't control somebody fishing your spots. You can't control somebody cutting you off. You can't control fish breaking you off. Things like that, right? So that eliminates a lot of things you shouldn't even think about. So this, to me, says get your preparation perfected you know your rods reels hooks things like that little things like that new line if you feel the line's old uh sharp hook get the best hooks you can get or if you can't buy new hooks get a hook sharpener and sharpen the dang hooks okay that that is what this truly means to me so this means preparation get ready so that when you go to a day when you have a day on the lake uh the things you can control don't fall apart on you because there's plenty of other things that will fall apart in you. So you want to control those problems. Okay, so that's number five. Coming from Kevin Van Dam. I forgot exactly where I got this from. But I think it was a couple years back in some interview or something like that. Kevin Van Dam. Number four. Goes to Michael Akinelli. 
He's the one that really made Never Give Up and Fish the Moment really, really popular. Now, from this might mean a lot of different things to a lot of people, and that's kind of what these things are. They're fairly open-ended, so you can go and attach it to your style of fishing or attach it to where you need help at. Okay, so to me, never giving up and fishing the moment pretty much means the same thing. So never giving up, giving up to me means you need to carry the same enthusiasm and blast off, or lines wet in our case, all the way till check-in or all the way till lines out. So the level of enthusiasm, the enthusiasm should be the same between all hours of tournaments. So that's what you want. Uh, fishing the moment is when, say, okay, here's here's this little sidetrack to fishing the moment, right? So so you go out with a plan, right? And it kind of works. Kind of works. You you got you caught three fish already. Heck, you got five fish already. But you know it's not good enough to win the tournament, right? And all this planning you've done, you know you're just not gonna win. You're in the top 10, don't get me wrong, but you're not going to win, but you want to win, right? So that's when fishing the moment kicks in hard, okay? So for me, that's when you're just like, okay, I got two hours left in the tournament. I'm doing pretty good. Okay, let's power pull this sucker down. Let's re-rig our odds. We're chasing big bass now. You're fishing the moment. You look around, you're like, okay, slight, slight wind, bluebird days, but we got to catch a big one. We got to catch a big one. If we catch one big one, we're going to win this tournament in the next two hours. That's fishing the moment right there. That's what I use a lot. When I'm presented with that opportunity, we will sit down. We'll take 30 minutes. Well, maybe not 30, 15 minutes to re-rig our rods, put either bigger line on it or pick bigger, you know, baits. Or we will shade our lake a little bit different with the, you know, depth shading so we can go target those bigger fish. We already caught the little fives. So now we need a big kicker. Or heck, if we already got a big kicker, we need a second big kicker. Okay? So that's fishing the moment. That's what fishing the moment means to me. So that's Iconelli, number four. Number three goes to the entire fishing community. But since I heard it from this guy, he gets most of the credit. Fletcher, Fletcher Shryock. Kind of a new guy to the world fishing. But, you know, I heard from him. Somewhere, somehow somebody is catching them. Now, if you don't know, if you don't have any background in fishing, you don't really know what this means. But to me, I've been here a couple years, you know, so I, I've noticed that some tournaments is real bad, right? Real bad. But somehow, somewhere, somebody is going to bring in a stringer of fish that blows everybody out of the water. I'm talking like, okay, so... Uh, you gotta have that one guy figure some needle in the haystack, something, and he's just gonna catch, say, just an average stringer of fish for that lake. But the lake is fishing really hard, so a lot of other guys will struggle to even catch a limit. Well, this guy's calling fish, okay? So that happened at Texoma, Jason Ray. Good job, okay? So when you're when you're having a hard day fishing and you're hardly catching any fish and you're catching you're getting like one bite an hour right it is very important that you do not miss those fish so it takes home i fished really clean every fish that bit that got hooked up i boated pretty pretty happy with that but somebody figured it out they figured out the lake so that's one thing going into tournaments and even um even if for the weekend angler guys it's like okay so just because you're not getting bit it doesn't mean that the fish ain't biting somewhere on that lake, okay? So keep that in mind. Uh, this is kind of a thing that, for me, I've, I've used quite a bit. Uh, that's why it's number three. Because my best tournament finishes usually are not the tournaments that I go in knowing that it's going to be a slugfest. It's usually the tournaments where I go in and it's like, oh, it's going to be a hard day. It's going to be a hard day. You better bring out your little finesse stuff. Or a tennis worm, or you know, a, a finesse jig, or something like that, because it's gonna be hard. It's not gonna be. It's gonna. It's, it's not gonna play to your strengths. So you have to go do something else. And these are the hardest tournaments that you will fish. But if you're doing that before everybody else is doing it, then you've already tapped into this idea, and odds are you will finish 
higher than everybody else. Okay? So somewhere, somehow, somebody is catching them. So it might as well be you. All right, guys? So that's number three from Fletcher Shryock. All right, we are down to the last two. So for number two and for number one, I think this is what separates the guys that are always in the top ten versus everybody else. There's, you know, going to be a couple guys that are going to get lucky, get to the top ten. But if you do a angler ranking or if you do a, you know, an, a an a angle of the year list at the end of the year, I think these last two is what separates the top ten from the Everybody else. So number two. Number two goes to Brandon Polinick. Now I heard this at his Angler of the Year speech. But I was already doing this. I just didn't know how to categorize it. You know. So he goes off by saying he's been using this thing called the five second rule. Now five second rule. The way he explained it was you have a lot of options sometimes. When you're going, you have a bad day on the water. You've tried everything. It's not working. And let me know if you have those days because you definitely got those days. But you're trying things that's not working, right? So your plan coming in is not working. Now you're presented with a, well, I still got a lot of time left. What do I do? Do I give up? Or do you say, oh, hell no. We're going to go smash this shit out of the water. So you have to start thinking about things you want to do. Uh, you have to look at the options that are presented. But a lot of times, as you kind of gain more experience, you start seeing a lot of options. You know, Especially if you have a fish finder and all this other stuff, you see five or six different options. So you need to make a decision. But you know you're on the clock, so you have to make a decision fast. And that's where five seconds comes in. You have five seconds to think about what, you, what your next move is, and you do it. So he goes, he actually counts it down, five, four, three, two, one, go. Because in five seconds, you force yourself to make a decision instead of wondering or mindlessly casting around. If it's not working and you're mindlessly casting around, you're just wasting time. So in his mind, he goes, look, five seconds, do something different because it's currently not working, okay? So when I was doing this a couple years back, it was kind of like, as soon as I found myself, like, zoned out, it was done. Done. Do something different. You got to keep your your interest in it. Because if you're not interested, you're just mindlessly casting around. You know you're not going to win. So you might as well pack it up and go home. So, five second rule. Keep yourself busy. Make sure you're always doing something. Always doing something. All right? So number two. Number two goes to Brent Pollinick. For number one, I thought hard about this because number one needs to apply to everybody. Whether you're a fisherman who fishes for crappy, you're a tournament angler, a weekend angler, or whatever. Maybe you're just taking your kids out pond fishing. It doesn't matter. Because this one will help everybody improve their game. So, number one goes to Gerald Swindle. And... Where I got this from was, um, I think it was a couple years back. It could have even been during his angle of the year run, but his wife would leave him like little like notes on his sandwich bag. And one of them that really stuck with me was, I want to see you at your very best. Okay, so that's got to grab you, you know. That's got to grab you a little bit because you know, only you would know where your very best is at. But you have to bring that very best out every time. Okay, so you want to see you at your very best. So, whether that's, you know, catching 10 fish a day, that's for some people. Some people actually just enjoy the world of fishing. So, it's up to you. But I want you to see you at your very best. So, what that means is you're going to try your hardest to catch as many fish or catch as many big fish or try to finish as high as you can in the standing so okay so that's what that really means and a lot of times you know when you this is like uh this could, this could definitely apply when you're you're fishing and you're at a low right you're at a low for the day it's already 9 30 the sun's up the morning bite is gone and it's just getting you know it's just at those two three hours of nothing happening you can apply this and you can say look this spinner bait that I'm throwing, this is not me in my very best because I'm not getting bit. Me in my very best, 
is a shaking head right now. So we're going to go throw a shaky head on 10 different locations in the next hour. That's what we're going to do. That sounds more like you at your very best for that very moment. Okay, so, so that... So that means a lot, you know, that means a lot. That means a lot to me, too. Because that'll, well, that'll say, okay, you know, I like I like throwing chatterbaits. I'm a crankbait guy. I like throwing hollow belly frogs. But when the conditions aren't there, that is not you at your very best. You at your very best might be, go throw that 2.8 cocktail. Go throw that Ned Rig. Go throw that shaking head. But you're still going to fish that better than everybody else, even though it's not your strength. Okay, so that's when that's what I want to get across is you need to see yourself at your very best all the time while you're fishing. So for the tournament anglers, that's making the proper adjustments. That's what people always say. But for the weekend anglers, that's like, you know, uh, seeing what's going on, evaluating what's going on. Maybe you want to change your lures. Maybe you want to move to the other side of the pond. Maybe your bait's too big. You got to downsize. You know, maybe it's a matter of you know instead of hook, you know instead of uh, using the entire bluegill, cut the bluegill in half. That applies to shad too. So, you know, making those adjustments so to bring out the best of what is currently happening, because you don't know. You know, like you might throw a shaky hit or a sinko out there, and you might catch the biggest fish of your day by doing something that you're not very good at. But you, you that at that moment. You were the best. That you. That was you at your very best. So, that's my top five for the uh, for this video. I hope it helps everybody out. I hope uh, uh, you guys can kind of see where I'm going with this, because a lot of these topics are not really like this is how you tie a knot. This is the kind of crankbaits you want. We'll get to those videos too, but this is kind of the videos that these are like those priceless videos, you know. So. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe. And then, and like I said, uh, we do have some merch. So go buy some merch. Help us out. And we'll see you on the next one. All right, guys?